Forrest, do you have something off the top of your head, something that you want to talk about? Well, Richard and I were talking on uh, our chat about uh, job possibilities, and um, it got me thinking, how do you keep from becoming poisoned towards the industry? You know, there's there's so many negative things that happen, and there's good things that happen. Um, how how do you keep from just getting so sucked into the negative, and um, and remember those positives, and focus on those positives? What what do you do to Richard? What would you say? Uh, I get to give a shout out to Tristan for this one then. Um, he mentioned that in, when you're one-on-one -on -one with him where like, you know, don't, don't look at the day, you know, cause there's been plenty of days where I, I flag my hours at the end of the day and I'm like, oh, great. This was a 1.38 pay day. Meanwhile, I have a vehicle sitting on my hoist that I'm pulling the heads off or something like that. And that doesn't count towards anything. I think that's especially for flat rate, like look at a week, look at a week in total. Don't, don't look at individual days, right? Because you're not going to be able to, to count, uh, like, you'll know, you'll know an hour tally in your head, but when you see that print out, you're just like, Holy crap. You know, you're, you're then the negativity sets in, right? You're like, I'm not making any hours not making any time it's and then it just cascades from there so um it, i think that that's good thing that, that tristan pointed out was just like look at the overall picture you can't you can't pull the microscope out and focus on a central point you gotta you gotta kind of have the you know the 50 foot 100 foot view on the big picture of everything rather than being you know 10 inches in front of your face and you can't see, can't see the big picture. Right. So there's a, mm -hmm. like you said though, Russell, there's a lot of negativity, a lot of negativity in the industry, but there's a lot of positivity in it as well. There's a lot of individuals are that are doing the right thing. There's a lot of leadership and a lot of groups that are doing the right thing. Um, but there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of horror stories out there for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to discount that there's, you know, there's good and bad with everything, but again, it all comes down to, I wouldn't say it's brand specific. Uh, it comes down to the leadership in the store that can really make or break a technician. Uh, but that's, that's my opinion on that. What would you say, Marshall? Without the answer being come to HD. That Flat may be a sucks. good answer. <laughs> I mean, you you saw the Wrenchway no. survey. The the HD techs were about sixty percent of positive opinion versus automotive. That was forty percent positive opinion. So, I mean, the numbers are yep. approximate, but it was very close. So, you know, yeah. it, mm -hmm. it may be right. I mean, I'm not going to beat up on you too bad. I mean, you guys know that I I'm I'm not an advocate for flat rate and. Uh, and and such but um you're gonna like my answer though joshua um i use a lot of self-talk so daily um, affirmations. uh daily affirmations um and then i also uh literally just self-talk tell myself in my own mind it's gonna be a good day or you know it's basically an affirmations but I make myself be the most positive person in every room. Um, sometimes uh, it's really hard, but you, if you don't want to drown in your sorrows or get stuck in that rut, you know, I think I get in a rut about once a year. I don't know if it's seasonal depression or what it is, but I always, I get a rut once a year. It takes me about a month to pull myself out of it. But, um, it takes a lot of positive self-talk to keep me jazzed up. 
and like I can be away from my apprentices and things like that and I'm just down in the dumps but when I'm around my coworkers I make a uh I tell myself and I make an effort to be the most positive person in the room and I tell myself to be that way and it's not necessarily that I'm actually feeling that way but it's kind of a practice makes perfect if I keep telling myself and I keep doing it eventually it I materialize it and then I pull myself out of that hole and then it's it becomes a habitual deal and then it's you know uh then I'm good for the year it seems like and then uh that that one time a year comes around and then it, it gets me again and I got to crawl right back out of it so self talk is I feel like super important and you have to be um, very uh, uh, purposeful with it. You've got to do it daily. And um, I really like to involve my junior technicians with the affirmations. I feel like um, giving, it's like, they're like your children. And it's, it's, I feel like it's our jobs to mentor them and give them the skill sets that they need to be successful in our industries. and. I need to give them ways to cope with the difficult times. And that's why I do that, that, you know, the, the affirmations, because there's going to be days when daddy ain't there and they're going to have to do it on their own and the old pull yourself up by your bootstraps deal. And that's what it, that's what it, that's the, that's the only coping mechanism I know that works. So that's, that's the one I lean on. And that's what I, that's what I teach my other guys. That's why I got that's, that's strong. Um I have I have difficulty with it because I can't the biggest challenge I have is staying consistent with something. The reason why I've got bloody focus and, and persistence tattooed on my fucking self is the, the two things that I struggle with the most. The benefit is in both circumstances when all of the good things in my life have come because of those things. When I've been able to focus on something for a persistent level of time, something positive has come from it in one way, shape, or form. Whether it's learning, whether it's money, whether it's you know position, whatever, whatever the case may be, you know things things come from those things for a reason. Um, the challenge is that I'm having is I, I rolled, I've read lo- I've read a lot, and the challenge I have with affirmations is staying consistent with them. Cause I think the, the concept and the reality of, of imposter syndrome develops so quickly that I have difficulty sticking with it because the daily affirmations that I keep coming up for myself after about two weeks, three weeks, it doesn't feel realistic. It's like, I need to immediately change the goals. So the thing that has has I've been able to do successfully over the last about three years is setting goals and creating action steps, small action steps towards each goal. Now, I may not achieve the goal, but I've started to achieve steps. And then subsequently, when I post the goals publicly in some way or write them down, it holds me accountable to those actions. So by doing those two things, by setting goals and then creating written action steps for those goals, it allows me to then reflect on them and reflect on the achievements. And that would be my thing about how to stay positive and keep focusing on as much positive I I can, because to our to all of our own emission this industry is a challenge See if, in more ways than one physically emotionally mentally it is draining at the end of a busy day it's draining at the end of a busy week it's draining at the end of a exceptionally busy uh tire season more than normal because tire season anybody that that out there that has existed around automotive in a in a store that deals with tire season quote unquote seasonally it is incredibly stressful and incredibly hard on the body especially now that we get into 
super low low profile tires, run flats, and all the best, all the rest of that crap. So being able to go back to that writing, we've been we've now like we're an hour and change into recording several uh, episodes of this series. And we keep coming back to ways to be positive and moving forward. And we keep coming back to writing, writing things down, writing things out. So if you need, if you in a position on a day, instead of looking at uh, your flag time of day or focusing on the negative on a day and looking over across the week, perhaps when you're having a challenge day, like Richard just brought up, Go back to your notes about your goals, your action steps, what goals and, and what more specifically, what action steps have you been successful at doing for the last 30, 60, 90 days, right? Each one of those is a win. Each one of those is a positive and use that as the building blocks to overcome something negative, the poison that's trying to infect your brain on a, on an awful day. Whether it's a person, uh, whether it's a job, whether it's a, a, a spouse, it doesn't matter what it is. Those, those things are wins. Every single day, you can write down a win towards your goals. A, it does two things. A, it keeps you positive, and B, it reaffirms the fact that you're moving towards a goal you're trying to achieve. Hopefully, we, maybe we can get a, a Stefan answer here uh, while he's in before he drops out again. Yeah, and my my fiance is definitely beating it into my head that I gotta speak uh, a little more positive on myself, my life, just what I'm doing on a day to day. She always tells me to have a good day, try to have a good day. I'm only allowed to talk about good things that happen uh, about my day, so I gotta look for the good in in everything. And and you know, I can't say no, nothing good happened today. It's like no, no you find something, figure it out. You know what I mean? So. Uh, she definitely pushes that for me, uh, and it does help to try to find the good. And you know, even if you're just cleaning up the uh, the parking lot because it's not looking too pretty, it's like, oh, at least you show the kids how to do it. You know what I mean? And it sounds pretty simple, but you know, sometimes the simple tasks are what what matter the most. I have a suggestion, just as a, a as a listening as a as an opportunity. I said this to my son two weeks ago. Stop using the word at least. Think about it for a second. When you use, like the phrase you just used, and I think all of us need to do this, and it's something that I, I didn't notice until after we had this conversation, he and I. When you use the phrase at least, it's an instantaneously negative connotation to whatever you're trying to do, whether it's at someone or for yourself. At least I did this. It's like how much you're literally putting yourself down before you finish the sentence. So perhaps to, towards uh, uh, Russell's statement earlier on, um, probably in a previous episode for those who are listening to this one, getting yourself educated in the terms of reading something to increase your vocabulary, um, getting yourself more well-versed in, in, in those kinds of things. Stop using negative words. If you want to stop yourself from being infected by poison that's around you in the working environment that you're working in or your home life or things of that nature, if you want to try and prevent yourself from being overrun with poison, stop using negative language, whether it's about other people or yourself, stop using negative or negative or pessimistic or any, any language that isn't neutral or positive. Just cut it out of your, cut it out of your your vocab your vernacular diet if that's the right way to phrase but that. If I do that, that might how be will a, I a ever good... refer to the lyric? <laughs> as a as a quality piece of General Motors engineering. <laughs> but then I'd be lying. <laughs> Well, no, that lyric is getting beat up, something fierce. Okay. Hey, before, it is improving. Before we, before every every day I, I'm, I'm getting a little less surprised on, on uh, how it's coming together. So, you know, um, I, I actually had one today that had like 10 problems written up. And I'm like, whoa, this is the way they were eight months ago when I first started working on them. But uh, it's actually unusual to see them that way now. You you know, two or three problems now. So it's getting better. But it, it, Russell, it's in the name. 
Look at the end of the name. Lower your and- IQ. Ooh, <laughs> did I say that? I'm probably going to get fired for it. <laughs> okay. Well, isn't uh, Hyundai yeah. the Ion Ick? So it's Ion Ick. So Lear Ick. Anything with the Ick, you should probably avoid, perhaps. I don't know. Well, uh, if you're all, a GM tech or a Hyundai tech listening right now, let us know in the comments. All the new uh, Cadillac EVs have IQ in them. So even like the Escalade IQ, the Celestique, the Optic, so the Lyric, all of them have IQ at the end. So, so what are the names of the the the? Uh, so okay, so we've got we now have the Escalic. What is what is the 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 the? Isn't it? It's oh, but they're they're they're, mo- they're like letters and stuff on the caddies, right? It's like XT six, right? Yeah, CT five, CT six. Yeah, the the CT6. non the non EVs use the CT or the XT. CT for sedans, XT for SUVs. Um, aside from okay. the Escalade, but with the EVs, they're switching over to using the uh, the names. So the Lyric is the first one. Um, the Celestique is the new super high end. Celestique. Um, the the Optique. The you know, there, there's a whole list of these names that are coming out that they want that IQ at the end. So. And there's a litany of ick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. We are going before negative we, with your names now, Joshua, so we got to change that. Oh, fair enough. One uh, uh, one thing I want to add, though, is uh, I, I think I've mentioned this before about stacking your wins. And just to throw, to throw the name out, Andy Frisella, like his, his power list. There's got to be some way we can adopt it to the technician world where, you know, not, you don't have to read, read 10 pages a day or, you know, but, but still there, there's been a ton of posts lately I've seen on the GM forums and the Ford forums about technicians that are like, my back is blown out. You know, my, I can't close my hand anymore. There's been a lot of, a lot of that where techs just aren't, taking care of themselves physically anymore okay so let me see let me let me okay so just for those folks out there who don't know who andy frazella is or what he represents or what he does google him so you get a better understanding but let me read basically what is the synopsis here of of what Richard is talking about. So the entire concept of the power list is to develop winning habits in your life. It's a super simple yet powerful concept. If you complete all five of your critical tasks between the time you wake up and the time you go to bed, you win the day. If you fail to complete all five of the critical tasks, you lose the day. The idea being is you set up those five tasks to do that you start out as easy as humanly possible. If you can't, if you try and set up those first five and you fail the first couple of days you're doing, it means that the tasks aren't easy enough to start with. The idea is to stack wins and get five stacked wins every single day. If you keep losing, you have to change those tasks so that you can start winning. Then the idea is to either uh, make the task more complicated, depending on what you need to get done, or remove a task because you've completed it so successfully that you can just inherently do it every single day without thinking. So if you don't know what the power list is after I've said it, and now let's go on, go on and check out Andy Frazella and check out the power list, read it because there's a whole book and principle behind it. You can learn about it. It's, it's life changing. If you can start it and be effective with it as you go forward. He also does things like the 75 hard, It is in a completely uh, mind and body changing uh, program. It is not for the faint of heart at all. Very few people actually finish it. Those who say they finish it and still don't look like they finish it didn't finish it. Um, I have not yet attempted it. I will. I am not ready for it mentally. I am definitely not in a place to be able to to do it, but I it's on my radar to try and maybe start this by the end of the year. I have other goals that I need to accomplish first. Those are my on my power list. So 
that would be awesome. That's a that's a good way to close out that one. That's pr that's pretty cool. Great way we talk about talking about uh, removing the poison or prevent the poison. That's a that's a, a good way, a very good tip on its own, irrespective of everybody else's input.